Hello everybody, welcome and thank you for joining. If this is your first time, so glad that you're here. And if you've been here before, welcome back. We're super excited to get today's episode started. Today's episode is called From Idea to App. It's that how do you bridge these great ideas for applications and put them on to ServiceNow? What goes on in between? And that's what we're going to study today. The cool thing is, is that we're not going to be getting into the platform too much. I know how much we love doing that, but this is important too. How do you get your good ideas and turn them into apps? We're going to study that. Let's get into it. So as citizen developers, I think it's ideal if we get some terms under our belts. This is going to help us kind of talk in the same language as some of the other developers do. It's not that we're becoming these hardcore coders and full stack developers. No, it's that we need to talk the terms that they use to build apps because they're going to be useful to citizen developers as well. For instance, a few we're going to be covering today is the word process and the word use case and human centered design. Those are terms that are used maybe in that world a little bit more, but now they're applicable to us as citizen developers. Because when you have an idea or you're working with your business unit or your department and you come up with a good idea or teams are coming up with a good idea and they're saying, it would be great if we had an app that did this, then you have to help bridge that gap between that great idea and getting an app going. So let's talk about a few of these terms that are going to be important to that. First one is process or business process. It kind of doesn't matter. You're, you're, you're in an organization, we're going to call it a business process. A business process is a series of actions that you will take to achieve a result. It's not hard to consider what a process looks like. You probably do it every day. Sometimes you might do it through email. Somebody asks you for something, you go out there and you do it, you let them know you're done. Sometimes people track this in a spreadsheet that just itemizes the item, the things that need to get done using the spreadsheet to document that you've taken care of a particular activity. That's a very common uh, process kind of management thing. Either way, processes are those steps that you take to complete an activity. So the first word we're going to look at is process. A process is a series of actions you take to achieve a result. So very common to think if you need to make a grilled cheese sandwich, what are you going to do? You're going to go grab the bread, you're going to grab the cheese, you're going to get the, the toaster going, you're going to get the stove going, and you're going to put it all together and melt it, and you'll have a grilled cheese sandwich. Those are the series of actions that you take to get the grilled cheese sandwich. Same thing happens at work every single day. You have a process that you need to do to get something done. So process is really key because processes are going to translate into use cases. So what's a use case? Use case is a term you can start using at work with people, and that's getting that process and turning it into the idea of a software solution or an app. So a use case is a software and system engineering term that describes how a user uses a system to accomplish a particular goal. A use case acts as a software modeling technique that defines the features to be implemented and the resolution of any errors that may be encountered. So in short, a use case is the software representation of the process. So we're starting to connect the dots. You have a process and now you have a use case. Use case is going to be a very common term that you'll start using and hearing as you get into developing more apps. Now that we've covered those two things, let's talk about that what you do to get this great idea and turn it into an app. Number one, design. Design is important because before you actually start building and putting your hands to the keyboard, you need to understand what in the process needs to be built. You start looking at this process in this use case and you need to design it in a manner that translates to ServiceNow. There's different ways and activities that you can use to get these ideas and put them on paper and turn them into a design. But the activity we enjoy using here at ServiceNow and I'd use with my customers all the time is the human-centered design thinking. It's a workshop. Human-centered design is another term you can use. Now, 
you can understand the concepts without knowing the full HCD uh, uh, framework, but at the very least, get here's the definition. Human-centered design is an approach to problem solving commonly used in design and management frameworks that develops solutions to problems by involving the human perspective in all steps of the problem solving process. So let's pause right there. What it does is it involves the human perspective. That's one of the key goals of human-centered design thinking. Consider everybody that's involved in the process. Don't be selfish. Don't think about yourself. Don't think about the only the person who's raising the most, um, the squeakiest wheel. Consider everybody that's using this process and keep them in mind when you're designing. Is it the submitter, the person who needs the help? Is it going to be the person doing the work? Is their perspective? How, how, how much are you going to focus on that? How about leadership, management, people that need to run reports, supervisors, people that need the metrics? They're uh, a human that needs to interact with this as well. So as you consider all of these personas, then now you start to be more holistic in your solution. You're not just focusing on one. You're letting everybody be a part of it. You're focusing on those humans. Now human involvement typically now human involvement typically takes place in observing the problem within context, brainstorming, conceptualizing, developing and implementing this solution. So part 2 of this is it's collaborative. So you allow stakeholders or representatives of each of those constituencies or each of those uh, personas to come in and help collaborate on getting this app off the ground and, and the ideas and the design established. So you're going to want to bring these stakeholders together so they can all influence the design. Super important and super productive. You can use a uh, collaborate. Uh, you can use collaboration tools uh, like a Miro board, or if getting back in person now, using a whiteboard and sticky notes, and you and you do these things in person now. But the goal is is to have everybody participate in human centered design thinking exercises to put out all of their ideas and the creative components. This is the most exciting part of the whole process because this is where all the great ideas come out. This is where the wish lists get established. This is where people are sharing their, their thoughts and what they hope for in terms of this application. There's no wrong answers. Allow things to come out during your human-centered design thinking exercises. The HCD has exercises and has templates of activities you can do with this team to get even more out of them. They're fantastic. Research them. Just in this short video, we just want to emphasize, consider all the personas who are going to use it when you're building your design and make it collaborative and let other people influence everything that's going to make up this application. Now, human-centered design thinking is powerful. So I encourage you to look it up. Thanks. Part two, architecture. So one of the outputs of the human-centered design thinking activities or the design part of building an app is going to be a distilled version of what it is that you're going to need for the app. During that design session, you would have discovered, I need a mobile app. I need it to be on a desktop as well. I need to have a dashboard that gives me some reports. I would like to have a chat bot that does you know, this and that. So now you have a, a core outline of what it is you need the app to do. We haven't built yet. Right now we just have the design. Now we get to architect. So how do you get from the design to architecture? Well, you start to use something like a capabilities mapping. So you can look at all the capabilities available on the ServiceNow platform. To name a few, you know, we have the Flow Designer that does automation. We have the App Engine Studio that builds apps. We can make tables. You have chatbot capabilities, our portals, um, the, the mobile experiences. So now these are all the capabilities that you know exist on the platform. So you start to map this design 
to those capabilities. And you start to understand, okay, I need that mobile. Okay, I need three tables in your, your data model. You're like, I need a table to, to do the process. I need a sub table to, to carry some child tasks and some approvals. So you start to you start to really itemize the components that are going to make up what you've designed. Does it need an email? You know, you, so you have a notification engine there. You need to make a survey. You have a survey engine. You're mapping your capabilities. So I think that's very important because after you you map your capabilities, you can architect your app. So we can call ourselves citizen architects now because as a citizen developer, you're now doing design sessions and now you're architecting. And sure, there are people who have dedicated lots of education and time into becoming architects. And they are very, very useful and help us tremendously when we're doing this um, architecting as well. But we can use that same term and maybe call ourselves citizen architects. It sounds like fun. All right, so now that you have an architecture established and you've, you've gotten your design, you've mapped out some architecture, you've done some capability mapping, you think you know what you need to put together, you have an itemization of what it is you need to do, now you get to build. Now the building is gonna be super fun and a lot faster now because you've thought about it, you've gotten from your good idea all the way to your architecture. So you are ready to build your app. So for the next episode, we're going to take that design idea. We're going to look at the architecture and we're going to build an app quickly together. Thanks for joining.